Have you ever considered a slat wall to hold your synthesizers? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about my alternative to a synth stand, a synth wall as I'm calling it. A couple months ago I was thinking about upgrading to beyond what I already had for my Summit keyboard and the Pro 3 that was on a synth stand and it was like a two tier type of solution. And then I started looking around and if you're in the US, then you won't find any US retailers selling Jasper's gear. You have to go to something like say Tommen or Thomen, however you pronounce it. You can tell me in the comments if I'm butchering that. Jasper's is clearly the best synth stand by what it looks like out there if you do the research. If you're looking for more than three tiers specifically, like this one, the Jasper's 174-150B, it's got four tiers and you can adjust the, the poles back and forth and do all the angling on that. It's already $425 though, and if you wanna add more keyboards or synth modules per level, then you have to buy more of those arms and each one of those arms end up being like 35 to 40 bucks, something like that, off of this website. So. You still have to pay for shipping across seas and then potentially import fees if it goes over say like 800 bucks or something like that. So the options for getting Jaspers in the United States isn't the best, even though Tommen seems to be pretty good overall. A lot of people say that they have no problem with ordering overseas from them. If you look at Sweetwater, like the multi-tier options are really limited. Like you got this onstage thing right here. You got this stand-tastic type of thing, you know, this ultimate support. Like there's no, they got this on station. This is what I have actually, this on, like a regular keyboard X type of thing along with um, this level for additional stuff. And honestly, it was okay for a while because I was just using like the Summit and the Pro 3 for just tracking things here and there. But I've definitely had the desire to have a bit more things set up all at once. So I started going down this path, looking at the options, and I was really close to pulling the trigger on a Jasper setup, which would have cost just about $700. So I probably would have avoided import fees and all that. And by the way, I'm not saying that this solution behind me is a better solution specifically. I'm just saying it is an option if you've been looking for alternatives to specifically stands. Stands are great, obviously. Our studio space isn't that big, so we try to be as conservative as possible with positioning and where we put stuff, you know? So this solution on the wall is uh, a bit more space friendly, a little bit more space friendly than what the synth stands offer. So what we ultimately went with is a slat wall, which is kind of showroomy. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, it definitely has kind of a showroom type of feel to it. Uh, but I, I did some research on the type of slat wall that I could get. And specifically, if you end up going down this path, you want to make sure you get something that is going to go into the studs of the wall. And you also want to make sure that the actual slat boards themselves are rated to be able to hold weight. Specifically, this crown wall stuff that we got off of Amazon, uh, it's a four foot by four foot area and it's just over 100 bucks so it's not too expensive it's rated to support a hundred pounds per square foot so in order to get the hundred pounds per square foot support on there it does have to be 16 inch spaced studs this wall behind me is 24 inches spaced of studs so it went on the uh on the ends and then the middle for where the the studs were zipped in so it's not getting exactly 100 pounds per square foot it's I don't know, maybe cut that in half, 50 pounds per square foot or something like that, which is still more than enough to hold the synths that are on this wall. But yeah, so installation was not that difficult at all. If you're handy with a, uh, a drill, then it shouldn't be a problem for you to be able to zip these into the wall. The biggest thing is you had to make sure that it was level on the first one. And you, uh, you also have to set up exactly where you want that first slat on the bottom because if you want to be able to sit and be able to play on the first level, you do have to be aware of the type of height they're going to be dealing with to make sure you get that right. Because obviously if you put this together and you get it wrong the first try, that would suck. You'd have to pull things apart. If you do go down this route, you want to make sure you measure for that first slat to be able to have it set up to be able to be comfortable for playing. And I did happen to get it the first try and it's awesome. It feels nice and sturdy for playing. And also you have plenty of foot clearance as well because there's no bars or things standing right there or like no cross from like the previous stand that I had. And I'll, I'll get to the arms in a bit because they do extend out to 19 inches and 21 inches. So there is plenty of clearance and adjustments on the arms. But in terms of installation, so you know, you got to set up that first one, make sure it's good for the height. And then it's a simple do of just adding each slat, zipping it into the studs on each, uh, each stud area doing the next one, zip it in, do the next one, zip it in, all the way up to four feet tall. And you could actually get other 
varieties of this. Like they do have eight feet by four feet and some of them have this like dual combo thing. You have more slat options in the middle. That would have been nice actually because these are spaced six inches apart. So the, the options for where I can uh, put these hooks are not as free as some other slat wall options, but again, I like the fact that it was rated for 100 pounds per square foot. So yeah, word of the wise, if you are possibly looking into this solution, you wanna make sure that you do get good quality slat wall that's not gonna break apart from say like a 30 pound keyboard or something like that. So maybe stay away from particle board, you know? But this stuff was, uh, felt like good quality plastic. It does have this like, this backing type of thing. So it's got like a support back wall of the plastic along with the, the upper or the, the front facing wall. Um, so material seemed pretty good on that. But once that's installed, you basically have these slat wall keyboard type of uh, display type of things that you can use. And there isn't a lot of these out on the internet. I, I basically found string swing and I found uh, a heavy duty steel one off of Amazon. And honestly, the Amazon one is pretty good, all things considered. And it's cheaper too if you get them in packs. And obviously you're gonna wanna buy them in packs if you're gonna have more than say two or three keyboards. Like I've got 12 modules on the wall, so it's actually really nice to be able to buy a few of these. What's really nice about these flat wall arms is that they can easily just clip in and out wherever you want. And they don't have to be all on one level, obviously, like you can mix and match levels. In fact, I have the, the push up one level and angled down right next to the summit. So it kind of creates an interesting spacing right there. So the, the flexibility is really cool to be able to space things the way you want. Uh, obviously because it goes into a wall, you are uh, limited towards where you can actually put it beyond that. Like once it's in the wall, like that's where it is. It's not going anywhere else. Uh, but it does save space because you are, you're not wasting any space behind the synth stand that would you know, take up space right there. Obviously, if you need to get back and unplug cables and do stuff like that, then like that can be a concern. And these slat wall arms, you do have to like pop them out enough to give yourself clearance to be able to plug cables in and out. But I was actually pleasantly surprised at how, uh, how space efficient they are once you start plugging things in because you can kind of snake things in between or around the, the actual arms or inside the arms to be able to kind of cable managed to stuff around and it ended up looking pretty good between the two the string swing and the amazon one that i got i actually like the amazon one better it feels a bit more sturdy and the the padding that it came with is uh, a bit more like i said sturdy for the actual keyboards that or the modules that go on there the string swing is a bit more expensive especially if you get the the more varied option, because this one will go from, I think 12 inches to 19 inches. Yeah, or no, 21 inches. So this one will go out the longest, but there's a caveat with it. The feet and the hooks are the tallest of the two. So if you have keyboards and you put them right up next to this feet or the, the feet, the clips, like they, they will, um, they'll block the keys on there. So this one from String Swing, unfortunately is not as functional, even though it's the most, varied it can go out to 21 inches which is really nice and also has more variations of the the angles which i find useful but the the foot clips uh are problematic for being able to play keys so that was unfortunate so this string swing one unfortunately isn't as useful in my opinion even though it has better angling and can go out a bit farther the amazon one is surprisingly good. It does only have uh, a 90 degree positioning, so straight out and then slightly down and then further down right there. So if you did wanna add more angle options, you would have to get out some sort of drilling unit and drill custom holes into it, which I, I don't have equipment like that. So you might have something of that nature so you could easily do that. You know, mileage may vary, uh, but you definitely get a better deal if you buy like the four or the eight. At 150 bucks and free shipping, that ends up being 37 and a half dollars. Got to add tax to that as well per pair. And then if you go with eight total, you're looking at 35 dollars 37 cents per pair uh, plus tax on there. So honestly, this ends up being a bit cheaper than the Jaspers, mainly because you're not paying for the structure. You're paying for the slot wall, which ends up being 100 bucks plus the clips. All right. So if you went with this route, you got. 
12 of these total. So a pack of four and a pack of eight, plus the slat wall, you're looking at just over $530, like maybe 540, you know, obviously tax, you're gonna add more as well. So if you were to go with the Jasper stand, you're getting close to 700, plus you got uh, the, the shipping, which is probably gonna be like anywhere from 40 to 80 bucks. Actually, I think it was 80 bucks because this is a bigger box. So 770 plus some sort of, uh, could get hit with import fees, possibly, don't know. Um, so you're definitely paying more money for the Jaspers, but you also have the convenience of being able to easily move the stand wherever you go. Again, I'm not saying that the synth wall is the better choice or anything like that. I'm definitely not saying that. I'm just saying this is an option that I discovered <laughs> and have gone through and actually implemented, and I am really liking the results so far. Another benefit with the slat wall is that you can actually add different types of like clip-ons and adjusters if you want. Like if you want to um, easily hook on some um, some cable stands or cable hooks, something like that. Something else that I added to this setup that the Jaspers, you'd have to figure out your own solution for, is power. Let me show you. So I added this four foot 16 outlet power strip to the base or the bottom uh, underneath the slat wall. So it's actually hooked into the wall as well. So you have four feet by four feet on the slat wall and then directly underneath it are 16 power ports right there that go all the way across it. This is really nice. And it has the, the power switch off to the side so I can easily reach down, turn on all the gear or turn off all the gear. And it's 16 ports, so there's plenty. You know, I can plug in some other stuff in there. So I did that for power management, uh, which is really nice and clean. And then I added a 16 port USB hub because I was considering going regular MIDI five pin DIN, but then I was like, maybe I should just use USB MIDI for now. And so far, this has actually been working out pretty nice. Uh, I still need to put it through its paces a few more and do a few more projects and all that and have a bit more MIDI data going back and forth. But I have all of the instruments plugged into this plus a Mackie Onyx 24 channel mixer and been recording audio with that. And it has been working and I haven't had any hiccups on a Windows computer so far. Although I did have an issue with my Korg Minilog XD module, but that's because Korg's MIDI drivers are weird, especially on Windows. Actually, it's probably fine on Mac. Maybe it's time to switch to a Mac. <laughs> so I have everything plugged into this uh, 16 port hub and it's been working out really nice. Uh, and then I just ran an extended cable, USB cable, powered extended USB cable over to my PC. And yeah, no problems right there. But yeah, back to the Mackie mixer. I am planning on doing a review of that Mackie Onyx mixer because uh, Mackie did send it over to check out and test out. And it's been really cool because I am a fan of Mackie mixers and I still to this day use a Onyx 1640i is my main kind of routing for everything analog. Uh, but I am putting the Onyx 24 through its paces. I will be talking about its pros and cons in a future video, but that's what I have everything plugged into currently that's on the synth wall. So I have basically 22 channels specifically that I can bring stuff in. And then if I plug it in via USB, I can actually record each one of those individually for, um, for whatever project. So. And finally, almost forgot to talk about this, uh, the lighting solution that I used. So in the in the studio, we do use Philips Hue lights. Not these lights that are over my head at the moment, but the lights that are accents and all that, they are Philips Hue lights, which if you're into video production, they're a pain in the ass because they flicker heavily. Uh, you have to have specific shutter speeds if you're gonna use them. Uh, so huge caveat with that, but it's really convenient to be able to just pull out my phone and change the lights. So what I did was I took two strip lights and I fitted them inside the slat wall grooves and then had those angles down and that provides some really nice lighting for seeing the keyboard faces. So I'm not like looking in the dark. It's really nice actually. And I can easily change the colors. So yeah, I'll leave links in the description below if you're interested in any of this stuff so you can go and check them out. Uh, but this is what I've discovered as a different solution it looks a bit more like a showroom, <laughs> but it's also really convenient too. And you can comfortably change things and change angles and all that. Uh, and uh, it's also very customizable for future stuff. Like if I need to pull everything off the wall and just have like two or three keyboards, like I can easily do that and reroute it. Or if I wanna load it up like it is now with 12 different modules, no problem. The convenience of being able to shift around the modules is really nice. But the caveat is it's synced into the studs of the wall. So moving that slat wall is a big pain in the ass if I have to change things around. Yeah. What do you guys think? Would you consider a slat wall for a synth wall? 
I'm sure if you already have Jasper stands, then that's, you know, a fantastic solution. So definitely not saying that's not a good solution at all. I do find it weird that Jasper's doesn't have a US retailer. Like Jasper's, what's going on? So yeah, that's the video. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you want to support the channel further, you can always like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that stuff. And if you want to go further, you can use our affiliates below. Affiliate links, they do support the channel directly at no additional cost to you. And if you want to go one step further past that, you can always join our Patreon as well. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Deuces.